I'm lying naked on the mattress, my legs wide open. People are coming one by one, the gaze right in between my legs. Tears are rolling down my face. I feel the shame creeping up in my body as I'm lying here. I'm in a six-week Tantra training and they're looking for our most tender part. This is the last thing I want to do and I'm the only one of the entire group that has to do it. Up until that day, I've been hiding my biggest insecurity. I'm 12 years old, feeling nervous to talk to my mom, lock in my truth. Mom, I don't want to shower at school with everyone else. A few years before, I got diagnosed with a skin disease, leaving parts of my body completely white. Recalling the comments of the other kids, what do you have there? Do you spill milk over you? Do you still have toothpaste on your face? Scared what kids are going to say in the shower when they see this? I point down at my yoni. I look up at my mom with the big eyes of a little girl that just wants to feel like she's normal. Oh, don't you worry. Hair will grow over it. Mom is trying to be supportive, but all that I can make up in that moment is that I need to hide. Buying clothes that will cover the areas I don't want to be seen. Stay out of the sun to not increase the discoloration and hiding myself sexually so that would never be noticed. I was willing to work on anything in this tantra training but this. With the bright lights shining right at me, exposing everything, I feel so small. Sophia, my friend, it's her turn to gaze in between my legs. My face is drenched in tears at this point, but her gaze captures me. I can't deny the love, the adoration that's beaming from it. She looked at me in a way I never looked at myself. At that moment, all the beliefs that nobody will ever think that I'm beautiful, that the comments, your skin is so unique, were fake, that others might think I'm contagious, gone from that transfigured gaze of love. My tears dry up, and with everyone that comes after, I start to smile and smile and smile. My lover, he's the last one. He pulls me close and whispers in my ear, Arya, it's not just how she looks, it's how she feels when I'm inside of her, how she orgasms. And all those negative beliefs that I told myself for years, gone. I realized that in between my legs was a pleasure portal that I didn't even recognize. I didn't even know existed. I was so obsessed with how she looked. I never paid any attention to how she feels. But in that moment, Everything changed. <laughs> I'm at my very first sex party. My friends and I got matching underwear, panther print. Now, I never imagined I would feel confident enough to walk in full lingerie in a group of 40 people. Sophia calls me. Arya, you wanna have a threesome with that guy? I look at him, I look at her, uh-huh. Next thing you know it, we get one arm each and he walks us upstairs. Now, everything that I desired intimately, I had put it down on the shelf out of shame. But with that gone, all of it became possible again. That night, I slept with two other men. In one room, over 10 people were watching me. Me, who used to hide under the blankets and turn the lights off during sex, feeling so scared to be seen. Now I enjoyed the attention. I felt proud of myself. For the very first time in my life, I actually felt beautiful. All my fantasies, they came true that night. 
and my friends and I were the last ones to leave. The next morning, a familiar feeling of shame creeps up in my body. What did I do? What's everyone going to think about me? I'm so confused. How can something that feels so pleasurable, so exciting, so good in my body make me feel so guilty the next day? In the months that follow, I am committed to finding answers. Now that I felt free in my body, I wanted to feel free in my mind. I place myself in situations that are rather <laughs> uncomfortable. Standing in front of a 900 audience, completely naked. Organizing sexual rituals where everyone can make love without shame. And have over 40 people watch me making love while I'm getting tied up in ropes. I started to feel alive in my body. I did more personal development programs, tantra courses, and eventually a tantra teacher training. So I could give other women the freedom that I received. My first workshop was immediately a success. I started teaching how sex can set you free, how there's a magic to it, how it connects you to a deeper part inside of yourself. Everyone walked out of that room transformed, feeling more confident in bed and inspired what sex could be like. But my message wasn't always well received. You can't talk about that, that's inappropriate. You're too much, you're just asking for attention. You are so slutty. The tension in my body as I read the comments on my social media posts. It's 2016 at that point and I'm teaching full on. Now that I dealt with my own shame, I had to deal with the shame of society. At one point, I wondered if it was all worth it. Even though every workshop I gave was a hit, it was really hard to deal with all the negativity that I received on me as a person regarding my work. I got scared that I would be seen as the woman that only talks about sex. She's so superficial. Trying to prove I was more than that, I kept talking about the years of yoga and meditation that I did and the impact it made on me. But the calling was so much higher than myself. I didn't come to this world to teach yoga. My purpose had everything to do with making love. I look at the big altar in front of me. Statues, rose petals on the ground, candles everywhere. I am in awe as I watch my dearest friends making love ecstatically. I just guided them through a sexual ritual to elevate the energy of their lovemaking. Combining my years of yoga, meditation, and energy work, we transformed the room into a temple. Lovemaking became an act of devotion. Every single couple in that room was praying as they were making love. Being able to transmit the depth of my own experiences and have that confirmed by my friends in front of me, I think to myself, how can this be anything else but sacred? And from that moment, nobody, no negative comments, no judgment, no pressure from society can throw me off. I deeply felt, seen, and experienced the sacredness of sexuality, and I was committed to initiate others into it. My breast is in his mouth, his head on my lap. I feel like I'm breastfeeding cosmic love into him. When my fingers at his forehead, my hand at his lingam, all the locks are in place to move energy from down upwards. His body starts shaking, trembling. He is in a full body orgasm. And I'm feeling so high, 
so grateful to be in this experience. I pray and bless him. I feel like the great cosmic mother who holds her beloved child in her arms. And I love playing with archetypes like that. I wasn't a seductress in that moment. I turned into the archetype of the intimate, devotional lover who takes all the pleasure and offers it to God. At that moment, the words of one of my teachers run through my head. Arya, don't waste your life like everyone else. There's magic out there. And the way to access it is through here. The memories of these words, they pierce my heart. And for the very first time in my life, I found a greater truth than anything else I ever believed in. Now that I look back on that little girl, she was so ashamed of herself. The teenage girl, so worried to be gossiped about. And the young woman who was scared that men would think her skin discoloration would be a contagious STD. When I look at my body now, it's pretty obvious. I don't have any large discoloration, but there. And I'm not ashamed anymore. I discovered this is my power portal. And the power it emits is highly contagious. <laughs> so if you want some of that, you know where to find me.